Anytime you're lifting a load with a jib, there's three weight capacities to consider. The jib capacity, the working load limit of the winch line, and the boom angle capacity. These are all independently rated, so it takes a responsible user to check all three to see if it's a load that can safely be lifted. So here I'm set up to lift this transformer. I looked at the nameplate, so I know it weighs 280 pounds. Now I have to make sure I can pick it up safely. This Saltec truck has a jib capacity placard on the top side of the jib. Here I can find the max weight that can be lifted at different extensions. To install this transformer, I know I'll need to extend it about two and a half feet, which puts me at a limit of 1,000 pounds. This winch line has a working load limit of 2,500 pounds, so I know I'm safe here. Let's take a look at the boom angle indicator. Keep in mind, as the boom angle changes, the jib capacity will change as well. NLC recommends that you do a pre-run with the bucket before lifting your load. I did this earlier and found that my weakest angle was at negative 30 degrees. And when you factor in the two and a half foot extension, that puts us at 495 pounds. So my weakest link is the boom. Keep in mind that these numbers can vary greatly depending on the truck you're using. And to comply with OSHA, you have to always make sure you're working within your load limits. But let's say I need to use a jib to lift up a wire. It gets a little more tricky because obviously conductors don't have nameplates with the weight written on them. But there's a couple things you can do to figure it out. If you're using a link stick, NLC recommends having a small dynamometer in each truck. This is the best way to monitor the weight you're lifting and make sure you never cross your limits. If you don't have access to a dynamometer, or if you're using a wire holder, you can contact the engineering department to get the weight or do some simple calculations. If you're lifting the line at this point, get the span length on each side of the pole. So this one's 350 feet, and this one's 300 feet. Now I'm going to add these together and divide by two, and I get 325 feet. Next, find the weight per foot of the conductor you're working with. You can ask the manufacturer or engineering department if this number is not on the work order. This one is 1.234 pounds per foot. Just multiply these together, and that's the weight that will be lifted. Keep in mind though, this only factors in the weight as you lift it straight up. Only lift it as high as you need to, because the weight can double as you increase tension. These numbers are only for freely suspended loads, so you should never use a jib to pull poles or to drag loads across the ground. These limits were put in place for your safety, so take them seriously and never lift a load without knowing its weight.